This video is sponsored by Sal Digital. Today I would like to discuss this teeny tiny lens from Malawa, the 6mm f2. It is the world's widest rectilinear lens for micro four thirds. Now rectilinear means the manufacturers have gone out of the way to try and make the vertical lines straight within the image and to not introduce barrel distortion. So the opposite of a rectilinear lens would be a fisheye lens, which would emphasize the barrel distortion when you're shooting wide. So rectilinear is designed to keep your lines very straight. And these are branded as zero D, zero distortion. Now I don't think it's quite that good. I don't think it's zero distortion, but my goodness, does it come close. So this tiny lens is definitely a contender for my tiny lens top five lineup. The only thing that makes this lens a little bit larger is the lens hood doesn't come off. It's good to keep on because the wide angle lenses do suffer from flares, which I will sort of go over a little bit better in a bit. Now the only other lens in my lineup that even comes close to this in terms of field of view is the Maker 8mm f2.8, which is a beautiful lens, but it's not as wide as this one, and it is bloody massive and quite heavy. So needless to say, I'm very excited to put this through its paces. There's a lot of things that I could see myself using this for. So the 6mm Lauer lens is manual focus. However, we do have electrical elements on the back and it will allow you to change aperture using the dials on your camera. It will also transmit data into Lightroom so you can edit a little bit better as well. Don't let the manual focus put you off. It is a little bit of a learning curve if you don't have many manual focus lenses, but because we are shooting so wide, I would say 80% of the time you need it just in infinity and you're pretty much good to go. Relying on your focus peaking in camera will do wonders and it's very, very quick and intuitive to get the focus right. And because we don't have an aperture ring to wrangle as well, you don't have to look down at the lens quite as much. Sometimes with manual lenses, if you have an aperture ring and a focus ring, sometimes you can get them mixed up when you're using it. Sometimes it slows things down. So this is very, very quick and very intuitive. The minimal focus distance is quite impressive as well. And it can give you some bizarre perspectives because you can have your subject really, really close, but then you'll see so much of the background, which you wouldn't traditionally be able to see with a more standard lens. I think this lens is super creative and super fun to play with. You almost have to rewire your brain a little bit to use it as a photographer, I find. I think if I'm going around town with a 35 millimeter, I can see it exactly how it would look in camera. But this wide angle lens just doesn't look how you'd imagine at all. I think the perspectives that this lens can give you creatively is just so much fun. A couple of tips for just shooting wide angle in general, and this is extremely wide angle. This is 12 millimeters in full frame terms. Get low and get close, I think. I think if you can get close to a subject and get low, you can really get some very interesting perspectives. Here are some examples. I think one thing you probably shouldn't do too often is be a bit standoffish and be at eye level because everything will just look so squashed and compressed on the horizon if you do it like that. I think with a standard lens, I kind of go, right, that's the shot. I can see it in my mind and I don't need to interact with the camera too much. When it's with this camera, I think it's like really watching the screen and, and being like, okay, if I tilt it forward, this part is emphasized. If I tilt it back, this bit looks bigger and this bit looks further away. I'm just getting exactly right the angle. You can get shots that you cannot get with any other lens and it's really, really good fun. So let's go back to the zero D sort of claim from Lauer. I do think they get damn blooming close, but I do think there is a little bit of bowing around the edges. And you would expect that with basically any lens that is this wide. So it's not overly a criticism. It is very simple to correct within Lightroom. You can just change the distortion slider within Lightroom. If you do want that super duper hyper straight sort of look. And this is something that not a lot of people talk about or, or maybe discuss. Maybe it's boring. <laughs> the third party lens manufacturers are at a little bit of a disadvantage. The Lumix and Olympus lenses will add lens corrections within the camera before you even touch anything in Lightroom. That's just a benefit of this system. Whereas the third party ones have to go by the quality of the glass alone. So in some ways they have more of a challenge and in some ways it makes it even more impressive. Let's talk about edge sharp. 
as you may expect with this being so wide the edges are a little bit softer when you're shooting at f2. This is something that's basically across the board on wide angle lenses with the exception of the absolute feat of engineering that is the Lumix Leica 9mm f1.7. I pixel peeped to holy hell with that lens and it is sharp all the way to the edges even at 1.7. I don't know how they've done it but it's magic but that's also a lot more narrow than the 6mm and it's a native lens and it has the Leica branding so that's probably where the extra quality comes from in that lens as a competitor. With this one you tend to be shooting for subjects centrally and symmetrically so the edge sharpness isn't very very dramatic at all and it doesn't detract from the overall image. If you do stop down slightly, which I've been doing, I, th I think if you have a subject that's very close to camera it's probably worth to be wide open so you can get a sense of depth within the scene. But if you are shooting something like a building, you're gonna wanna be shooting sort of stop down anyway, and then it sharpens right up throughout the frame. One thing I really wanna test this lens for is astrophotography. So if we do ever get a clear sky ever again in England, I will definitely test it out and let you know how it goes. Ah, the puffins! So this is a Sal Digital Professional Photo Book with the acrylic front, and I got the finishing cover in, in sort of a gray neutral tone, which I think worked really well. I've used a few different services in the past for my wedding photography business, and I have to say the Sal Digital design software is just the absolute easiest I've used by a mile. You have three options. You have literally a one-click solution, so you can put all of your photos in, and then it will sort of organize it all for you in a one-click solution. Then the next level is getting a template, and then you can just drag and drop your photographs in in whatever order that you like. Because I'm a little bit of a control freak, I went with Design My Own. And you can drag in all these different types of templates. So you can have three photos on a page, you can have all the different combinations that we've seen. And then you can really tailor it to tell the story that you want it to tell. Sal Digital offer everything that you could ask for in prints. We have photo books, we have wall art, we have the brushed metal wall art, which I had in a previous video. If you are looking to print out something and get something the very best that it can be and something that will last and stand the test of time then I think Sal Digital is a wonderful option. So let's talk about flares and characteristics of this lens. We have some interesting shaped bokeh when you stop it down slightly. You can see the blades very clearly within the bokeh balls and some of them look sort of pentagonal or hexagonal. That's quite interesting. If you don't like that effect, you can just shoot at f2 and it'll be more or less browned. You do also get some interesting starburst or, or sun stars with this lens. And this is... This is an effect that I can take or leave, to be honest. I think sometimes it works and looks interesting, particularly sort of if you're shooting like nightlife and you get lights behind your subject and you want some starburst, I think that looks really cool. But if you're doing it towards the sun, I think it sort of adds like, like a barrier of disbelief between you and the viewer because you want the viewer to be able to look at your picture as though they're seeing it with their own eyes and adding in things like starburst and flares and things that are very lens language, it makes the viewer sort of have an extra barrier between the image and the scene, in my opinion. Your mileage may vary. Have as many starbursts as you like. And again, that effect is made more or less depending on which aperture you are at, so you can dial it up or dial it down to taste. While the front element of this is quite small, it is slightly rounded, as you can see, so you do suffer from flaring, which is to be expected, but it's nowhere near as bad as, say, the Maker lens, which is just like whoa, completely domed. So you do have some flares, but it's not as bad as other lenses in this class. Am I in focus? It's really hard to tell. So it's really hard to set focus if you're vlogging, but I reckon if you sort of left a mark on the lens with it being manual focus, you could definitely get away with it. I look at the real estate. It's obscene. I think you can get some brilliant images and very unique looking images with this focal length. I think it's incredibly small and portable and well built and the image quality is superb. There are some competitors on the market like the Maker and the Lumix one, like I've said. So there are a few options, but this is the widest, it's rectilinear, it's small, and I think it will tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people. Watch this video next where I will go through five more tiny lens options.